In this video, we will learn the textual comprehension, grammar and vocabulary of the Unit 4 of the 10th Standard English Textbook, SSC Board, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. On to Unit 4, Part A, Rendezvous with Ray. On to the first question. What did Ray's detractors accuse him of? Did Robert agree, agree to their accusation? If not, why? Firstly, we will answer one by one. One question after the other. What did Ray's detractors accuse him of? He did. So, the did denotes past tense. Hence, the answer should be in past tense. Here goes the answer. Ray's detractors accused. Accused is nothing but did plus accuse. Accused him of selling India's poverty to the West. Now, the second question. Did Roberts agree to their accusation? No, Roberts did not agree to their accusation. Why? Because he felt that the spiritual poverty of some rich people was much a matter of worry than the material poverty depicted in Ray's movies. So, uh, Roberts did not agree with the opinion of the people that Ray was selling India's poverty to the West. On to the second question. I didn't come here to convert. In fact, I am the one who got converted. Who said these words? What different shades of meanings do you find in the words of the speaker? So, first question we will answer. Who said these words? Robert said these words. Now, we will answer the second question. What different shades of meaning do you find? Do you? That is present tense. The answer must also be in present tense. He says that, says denotes present tense. He says that he came to India to explore the world and after coming here, he got converted into a complete human by identifying his true being. This means that he did not come to India to convert people into Christianity. Rather, he got converted into a complete human. On to the third question. Roberts took nine years to meet Ray in person after joining St. Javier's College. Why did it take so long? What would you do if you were in his place? Firstly, we will answer the first question. Uh, why did Robert take nine years to meet Ray in person? Why? Robert wanted to get to know more of Ray and his works before he met him so that when he met Ray, he could have a worthwhile conversation with him. Worthwhile in the sense, the moment he speaks, the time he spends with Ray should be of some value. It should not be a, a formal conversation or something with someone uh, do just for the formality sake, not of that sort. He wanted to have that in-depth relation with Ray. Hence, he took nine long years to collect information uh, to meet Ray. Thus, it took nine years to collect information and to muster up the confidence to meet Ray. Right. And on to the second question, what would you do if you were in his place? If I were in Robert's place, I would try to meet Ray in one or two years. I won't take so long. I can't uh, wait for those many years. I would just go and meet him in two or three years. On to the fourth question. How was Ray perceived by the outsiders? Perceived in the sense, uh, looking is just looking at the external appearance. Perceived in the sense, uh, from their uh, inner outlook, from their uh, thought process, how is he looked at? Was his perception true of Ray's real character? The first question we will answer, how was Ray perceived by the outsiders? Ray was perceived as a cold aloof and intimidating person. Intimidating means very scary person, very rude person. Was this perception true? No, this perception was not true of Ray's real character. 
In fact, he was very simple and unassuming, gifted with a subtle sense of humor. What is meant by the line Ray took off where Tagore signed out? What was Ray searching for? What is meant by the line uh, Ray took off where Tagore signed out? It means that Ray began his journey where Tagore concluded. That is, he followed the footsteps of Tagore. What was Ray searching for? Ray was searching for an answer about the existence of God. So we all know he was agnostic in his uh, whole life. So he did not have an answer to the question about the existence of God. So in the last movies we can see his search for the answer about the existence of God. On to the sixth question. How did Roberts try to take Chitrabani forward? How did Chitrabani help filmmaking in Bengali? The first question we will answer. How did Robert try? Did denotes past tense. Hence the answer should also be in past tense. Here goes this way. Robert tried. Tried is nothing but did plus try. Robert tried to take Chitrabani forward by arranging most of the initial funding from Canadian agencies. And then how did Chitrabani help filmmaking in Bengali? Chitrabani helped. Here again did is there. So helped. Helped is nothing but did plus help. Chitrabani helped filmmaking in Bengali by producing important documentary features and by becoming the breeding ground for local talent for filmmaking. On to the seventh question. The theme of rendezvous with Ray is, what are the themes? Take any two options. To explain the affairs of Chitrabani, to picturize the illustrious life of Ray, or to explain the experiences of Roberts with Ray. Yes, the right answers are to picturize the illustrious life of Ray and to explain the experiences of Roberts with Ray. On to the vocabulary part. Read the following report and fill in the blanks with the word from the box below that collocates with the underlined words or phrases. Collocation, collocation, that is the combination of words is called collocation. So which word collocates or has the best combination that we have to find out and fill in the blanks. The venue of the celebration was Ravindra Bharati Hyderabad. It was a hundred day celebration of the film Animals Forever. Avinash, the hero, was full of life with his dash performance. So the right answer here is outstanding performance in the film. He was admired by everyone. In fact, he was considered to be the main reason for the success of the film. The hall resonated with, with Thunderous clapping, resonated means echoing, reverberating. Completely it is echoing with the dash clapping. What is that? Thunderous clapping. The clap was like a thunder which echoed over there. When he came onto the desk, the auditorium with packed audience honored him with a dash ovation. Ovation in the sense respect. How did they show their respect? By a standing ovation. Standing ovation, generally when the performance is uh, outstanding, extremely uh, good, then everyone stands up to show their admiration towards the artist. The next sentence, the producer felicitated everyone in the unit in a dash manner. Yes, fitting manner, fitting manner in the absolutely the right way, in the correct way he had uh, honored each one of them. The event was momentous and unforgettable. Momentous means for unforgettable and a memorable moment you can say. On to the next page, this is one word substitutes. That is, we need to put one word substitute for a long uh, sentence. This we have seen in the unit one also. Now let's get into the exercise quickly. 
The first one, a short stay between two places in one's journey. Yeah, that's the stopover. Here we see a robber watching the movies. That is Appu trilogy and the stopover. Second one, a person who brings out new books, who uh, brings out in the sense who gives the books to the uh, world. Who is he? He is a publisher. The third one, a group of three films that has the same characters or subject. Yes, what's that? That's the trilogy. And the fourth one, an impressive entrance to a building. Yes, it's the portal. A person who tries to make something less good by criticizing it. Criticizing means speaking negative of it. Who is that? Is the detractor. A person who is extremely important or large in size. Who is this? Yeah, this is Colossus. The seventh one, a person who is responsible for a problem or a crime. Who is this? This is a culprit. Culprit is uh, generally the one who is accused, who does a crime is called a, a culprit. A handwritten document. What is that called? It's called a manuscript. On the ninth one, a statement that expresses something people believe is true and is to be followed. What is this? This is the dictum. Dictum means moral values, some uh, certain moral uh, principles which are supposed to be followed. Using more words than needed. What's that called when you use uh, more words? You go blah, 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 more than what is required and make people boring. That's called verbose. Something designed to teach people some moral. What's that? This is didactic. A person who is not sure about the existence of God. Who, what is he called? He is called an agnostic. Satyajit Ray was agnostic. A branch of philosophy that studies the principles of beauty in art. What's that called? It is aesthetics. A result of a situation or of an action. What is it called? It is a fallout. On to the 15th one, a film that gives facts about something which deals with the real world with not much of a fantasy, with not much of the imaginary things going into it which gives the facts about something that's called a documentary. On to the next bit. In the lesson rendezvous with Ray, we come across certain words or expressions that are not from English. For example, en route. This means on the way. These expressions are taken from languages like Latin, Greek and Portuguese and so on. There are certain instances where these expressions are used in English, perhaps because of the precision in meaning. Precision means accuracy. Whatever we want to tell with that particular terminology, it is very well, it is fittingly done. So that is called precision. Precision means accuracy. Some of them along with their meanings are given below. En masse altogether. Viva voce. A spoken exam. In total, totally. Alma mater means mother of the soul. Ex officio means included because of the rank or job. In absentia means in the absence of. Detour means a longer route we take to avoid a danger. Verbatim means word for word. Exactly as spoken or written, that is synonyms, the words that we find as a meaning in the thesaurus. Status quo, the situation as it is now, this generally we hear in the news bulletins. Ad hoc, ad hoc means a spontaneous decision, not planned in advance. Bona fide means a genuine, a real or legal, how much it is uh, real enough. Then lingua franca means link language. Magnum opus means the greatest work. Sign die means indefinitely. On to the exercise now. Read the passage and fill in the blanks with appropriate expressions given in the list above. On the 14th November, on the occasion of Children's Day, the children across the state requested the officials to conduct children's film festivals more often. 
They submitted a memorandum to the secretary to the government in Hyderabad in this regard. The government conceded to request and came out with a proposal to set up an what committee? Yes, ad hoc committee to serve the purpose before a permanent body is in place. For the time being, an immediate decision was taken. It was proposed by the government that the committee would be led by a department official as an ex officio president, the, uh, the, given, the post given because he belongs to a higher category, a cadre of officers. The committee should conduct a written exam along with a viva voce to identify student representatives at Mandal district and state level to strengthen the culture of film festivals among the children. Viva voce means a spoken exam. The bona fide of the students should be verified for such identification. It should be verified that the children are genuine and they belong to the particular category so that it, it goes to the deserving candidates. The proposal made the screening of at least a magnum opus of a director mandatory every year. The children were thrilled to bits on this. On to the next bit, prepositions following adjectives and adverbs. Let's look at certain verbs, adjectives, adverbs and the preposition they are followed by. Proud, proud of, married, married to, good, good at, different, different from, keen, keen to, keen in is also possible. Famous, famous for, capable, capable of, responsible, responsible for, believe, believe in, shout, shout at, think, think of, agree, agree with, depend, depend on, recover, recover from, belong, belong to, apply, apply for. Now we ought to use them in our own sentences. The first one is proud of. Mr. Suresh was proud of his son's achievement. The second one, married to. Sujata got married to a rich man. Next one is good at. Mr. John is good at teaching students. The next one is different from. Everyone's project work must be different from each other. The next one is keen to. The NGO is keen to set up skill development centers. The next one, famous for. Tamil Nadu is famous for idli and sambar. The next one, capable of. I am quite capable of handling any situation. The next, responsible for. The newcomer is responsible for all the mischiefs in the class. Believe in. I don't believe in astrology. Shout at. It's wrong to shout at anyone in public. Think of. Mrs. Lena is thinking of hiring a maid to assist her in her household works. The next one, agree with. I don't agree with the statement that only the academic grades can determine a person's intellectual caliber. Depend on. The farmer depends on the monsoon for cultivation. Recover from. My grandmother is slowly recovering from her illness. Belong to. This site belongs to Mr. Pradeep. Apply for. He has applied for the post of a clerk. Fill in the blanks with suitable prepositions. All last winter, Sharad suffered from coughs and colds. Anand is accustomed to the heat. Accustomed means habituated. Kumar was afraid of his enemies. Sri Ram was always arguing with his brother. Sindhu was dedicated to her job. Priyanka was shocked at the hatred they had shown. I said to you, I am thinking of going to America 
I have actually dreamt of it. I want to talk to the group about their exams. I was terrified of her. I have always been terribly fond of you. If you continue to support someone who is in trouble, you are loyal to him. If you don't understand any of these words, you could refer to a dictionary. It wasn't his car. In fact, I don't know who it belongs to. My problems are very similar to yours. People started to shout at the driver. She had always been bad at languages. She listened to me and then told me about her problems. The accident sadly resulted in the death of a man. The buses are often late so you can't depend on them. They may feel jealous of your success. On to the next bit. Read the following paragraph and notice the use of past perfect and simple past tense. So we all know past perfect tense is used to denote an action which happened before an action which happened in the past. So first action in past perfect tense, the next action we put it in past tense. As all the actors had taken their positions, the curtain rose. They started acting as a director had asked them to. The audience enjoyed the play very much. The hero kicked the comedian since the comedian had done mischievous things. The musician fell off his chair after the comedian had fallen on him. The power went off after the musician had landed on the cables. There was darkness and silence everywhere. After a while, two persons in the audience started a conversation. Now we have to uh, get into the sequence of the events. That is, the actors had taken their position. Then the curtain rose. They started acting as in how the director had asked them. That is, first the director had asked them to act in a certain way. Then they started acting. The audience enjoyed the play. Then... The hero kicked the comedian since the comedian had done mischievous thing. That is, first the comedian did mischievous thing, then the hero kicked him. The musician fell off his chair from after the comedian had fallen on him. So, first the comedian fell on the musician and the musician fell off his chair. Then the power went off. Because he landed on the cables. The musician landed on the cables. That is first the musician landed on the cables. Then the power went off. There was darkness and silence. And then two persons in the audience started a conversation. Oh what happened? Everything had been disturbed before the play came to an end. So here play came to an end before that it had been disturbed so that we have to put in past perfect tense damn it the play was very interesting someone on the stage had done something when the hero threw him off i too saw it it was a comedian the hero hurled him hurled him is threw him since he had done a mischievous thing how disgusting I had paid 100 rupees before I entered this theater. Everything has become a chaos. Where was the director? Had he tried to set things right before the audience started leaving, it would have been nice. So this is how the conversation should have uh, gone because here we make all the events into, a, into the right sequence. Then. The electrician had restored the power before the audience left. Thank God, at last, the play resumed. Resumed means playback. Again, it has started. Restart. On to the editing part. Given below is a paragraph with 10 errors in the areas of concord, tenses, prepositions, punctuation and articles. Edit the paragraph. 
The Indian film industry has witnessed sweeping changes in the past 100 years. Here in can be written as during the past 100 years. It started off with the mute films. Here OF should be replaced with OFF. Even then people like this new form of entertainment. There were several intervals. Here was is incorrect. There were several intervals in a film show because of a single projector. Later, the technological changes. The, uh, the word technology would be replaced with technological. The technological changes made a talky film possible. A theater of those days is like a rice mill. Is is incorrect. It should be replaced with was. This type of theater was called touring talkies. These didn't tour. These denotes plural. So it should be that didn't tour. Or you can make the entire thing into plural. Theaters of those days were like a rice mill. These type of theaters were called touring talkies. But these did not tour. That way also you can write. There were bamboo screens to serve. Served is wrong. To serve should be there. This is uh, infinitive. To serve the purpose of walls of the modern theater. Cut shows were a luxury of those days. Have you ever watched them? Watch is incorrect. You have to use watched. Because beside have you should use a V3 form. Now the modern theatres is, is is incorrect. Theatres is plural. So the modern theatres are completely different. Multiplexes with DTS, 3D and 4D are a present reality. On to part B, Maya Bazaar. The first question is there for you. You have read the review of film My Bazaar. List the things that the review focuses on. The things that the review focuses on. So your list, list the things is given. That is why I have written 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Otherwise you ought to write in a sentence only. The greatness of the director in making it the greatest Indian film. The extraordinary song sequences, dialogues, makeup and costumes. The visual effects, the contribution of the artist both on screen and off screen in the success of the movie. The story having close connectivity with the story of common people. So this is what the review focuses on. On to the second question. Do you think this review of the film is positive or negative? Substantiate your view. I think this review is positive. The expressions, landmark movie, sterling performances, reverberation of songs, immortalized dialogues, feast for the eyes and soul, etc. tell us that this review is a positive one. On to the third question. What made My Bazaar a landmark film? The meticulous direction of K. Viridi. Generous production of Nagiridi and Chakrabani. The sterling performances of the star and symbol that it had right from S.V. Rangarao, Savitri, NTR, ANR and Gummadi. The dialogues of Pingali Nagendra Rao. Music direction of Gantasala. Cinematography of Marcus Bartley made Maya Bazaar a landmark movie. Why is Maya Bazaar watched repeatedly? The viewers identify every character of the film with someone they know in their immediate vicinity. Vicinity means in their immediate locality or in their relation or in their friends. The dialogues are very appealing. Appealing means very touching. And the story base reminds them of their past. So, Maya Bazaar is watched repeatedly. On to the fifth question. What is the central theme of Maya Bazaar? 
How have the Telugu speakers settled abroad look upon, looked upon Maya Bazaar? The central theme of Maya Bazaar is to give an awareness to the people on the rich Telugu culture, heritage, customs, language, rites and rituals. The Telugu speakers settled abroad looked upon Maya Bazaar as a means to learn Telugu culture and to know how to address their relatives. On to the sixth question. The purpose of the review is to give an account of the stars of the film, to establish the element of Telugu culture in the film, to help NRIs understand Telugu culture, to praise the producer of the film, to advertise a film. The best of all the options is to establish the element of Telugu culture in the film and the second preference is to give an account of the stars of the film and the third option to help NRIs understand Telugu culture. On to the next bit that is a vocabulary. In the review of Maya Bazaar, the expression language and custom has two words linked with the conjunction and. We also use expressions like cup and saucer, near and dear and so on. Here are some sentences with the binomials. Sports is a part and parcel of education. The new theatre is rough and ready. Music is not only Rayman's bread and butter, but also his passion. The film industry is expanding in leaps and bounds. The customer can pick and choose anything he likes. Give and take policy is always helpful. Ray gave his heart and soul to reading books. He stood by me through thick and thin. The main goods were shifted. Then the odds and ends were taken. Now we ought to match the following binomials with their meanings. Part and parcel means an integral part. Rough and ready means almost finished. Leaps and bounce means big leaps. Bread and butter means livelihood. Pick and choose means a large choice. Give and take means help one another. Heart and soul means dedicated. Thick and thin means difficult times. Odds and ends means unimportant things. Use them in your own sentences. Vegetables and fruits should be a part and parcel of our diet. The new school building is rough and ready for the students to occupy. Carpentry is my bread and butter. I will always give my best. Once she started working hard, the earnings in her business grew in leaps and bounds. The customers can pick and choose any product in the supermarket. Give and take policy can help build up mutual understanding. The great mathematician Ramanujan gave his heart and soul to solve unsolved mysteries of mathematics. My friend has been with me through my thick and thin. I am really lucky. Some people keep collecting odds and ends, naming them to be sweet memories. On to the next bit. Read the following conversation that took place in the classroom of a film institute. Go through the conversation. Then you have a bit of information about some shots. Go through the information regarding the shots. Which short is known as what? And then here are some visuals. Identify their features and label them. You may choose the labels given above. The first one. This is a low angle shot. What does low angle shot mean? The camera is placed below the subject. The subject appears larger than normal. The next is a Dutch angle shot. What does a Dutch angle shot mean? It is neither vertical nor horizontal. It is oblique. Oblique is it's from a slanting angle. What's the next picture? Which shot is it in? It is an establishing shot. 
What does establishing short mean? Let's get and see what an establishing short means. It is usually from a greater distance to establish the setting. And the next one, let's see what that shot is all about. This picture is in a bird's eye shot. What does a bird's eye shot mean? Let's go and see what a bird's eye shot means. A bird's eye shot means it is shot directly and vertically down on the subject. So you can see here this shot has been taken directly and vertically from the top of the subject. The subject here is the Eiffel Tower. On to the models. Models. Models are modal verbs. Modal verbs are also called as modal auxiliaries or models. What are the functions of these models? Shall. Shall is for obligation, offer, order or suggestion. Should is for obligation or advice. Can is for ability, possibility or permission. Could is for request, suggestion, permission, possibility or ability. Will is for certainty, intention, futurity and purpose. Would is for offer, preference, past habit, future of the past. May is for permission, possibility or wish. Might is for possibility. Must is for compulsion or inference. Let's get into the exercise now. Read the following sentences and identify the functions performed by the models. He can sing for 8 hours at a stretch. What does it tell? It tells about the ability. You could take an umbrella. It's raining outside. That's a suggestion. We should complete the shooting by tomorrow evening. This is an obligation. Shall I wait till you come? This is an offer. The time was up but the makeup person would not turn up. This is the future of the past. The car hasn't arrived yet. It must have got a flat tire. Flat tire means punctured. Car tire is punctured. Yeah, this is an inference. Inference means uh, after one action, the consequence. Yeah, we uh, get to the inference means we get to the conclusion that such and such might have been the reason. There may be heavy rains tomorrow. So why couldn't we go for indoor shooting? This is a suggestion. Will you join us for tea? This is a request or you can call it a futurity also. The agreement between the two parties shall be in force for two years. This is an order or an obligation. It might be an idea to postpone the release of the film. This is a possibility. On to the part C, a tribute. On to the first question. Have you ever seen any of the films in which Savitri acted? List them. Which of them do you like the most? Yes, I have watched three films in which Savitri acted. They are Misamma, Devadasu and Patala Bhairavi. I like Maya Bazaar the most. On to the second question. Savitri's qualities and her acting have been mentioned in the tribute. Which of Savitri's qualities fascinates you the most? Savitri's expressive eyes fascinates me the most. The way she expresses the feelings perfectly with a natural touch is just remarkable. On to the third question. Why was Savitri taken away from her main role in the film Samsara? Savitri was taken away from her main role in the film Samsaram because she was nervous on the sets. On to the fourth question. How do you think Savitri was able to strike back after she was replaced from the main role in Samsaram? Savitri was able to strike back because of her passion for acting. She proved her potential by her tremendous action and liveliness in the role of Parvati in the movie Devadasu. Thus, she was given many roles in many movies. She got many more opportunities. On to the fifth question. The purpose of the tribute is 
choose the appropriate answer the purpose of the tribute is to admire savitri's acting and her abilities hope this session is useful to you you have learned about the vocabulary grammar and the comprehension of unit 4 hope this session helped you out in comprehending the passages keep watching and keep sharing with your friends i'll be glad if you write your opinion in the comment section please click the like button and subscribe our channel do not forget to share with your friends thank you